Well, thanks for staying with us. Earlier this week, I was able to talk with State Senator Saud Anwar, who has two perspectives on what's going on with the coronavirus. The first as an elected leader and the second as a doctor. Here's part of my conversation with him. I want to welcome Dr. Saud Anwar. He's a state senator from South Windsor, also a pulmonary doctor. Uh, we have a lot of questions for you about coronavirus, but I do want to start with what's going on at the Capitol or what's not going on at the Capitol right now. The Capitol closed until March 30th. What are you hearing from your colleagues, and is any business getting done there at this point? So, so right now, thank you so much for having me, Jen. Uh, uh, we are obviously uh, very uh, careful at this time. Uh, in public places, we want to make sure that the risk of transmission is minimized, and that is one of the reasons uh, the collective decision has been made and, and the leadership has made the decision that uh, the uh, legislative office building at the Capitol will be closed. Uh, while that is happening, uh, we are on the con on the telephone uh, very frequently between the the senators. We are looking at uh, our responsibility to take care of the immediate needs of the people. So that's what's going on with respect to the legislative work. Uh, that is actually going to be uh, delayed a little bit because of the obvious reasons that uh, we need to have uh, uh, these decisions in public. Um, and, and we need to make sure that they happen in a manner where everybody knows what conversations and discussions we are having, and, but we need to make sure people are protected first. Now you're, so we'll be delayed. Right. You're vice chair on the Public Health Committee. Is the Public Health Committee still in touch? Are they talking at this point? So, so I'm, I'm, I can tell you that the leadership of the Public Health Committee is extremely involved and in working with the Department of Public Health, with the governor's office at this time. So I'm, I'm one of the members. I'm not in the, the main leadership uh, committee position, but yes, we are interacting. We are making sure that uh, from a legislative end, we are there to help our uh, administrative uh, executive leaders. All right, let's talk about coronavirus right now. And, you know, you're kind of really on the front lines of this as a pulmonary doctor. What do you think and how do you think our response has been so far as a state and a country to this disease? So um, th this is unprecedented. We have not seen anything like this as a society, as a country, and as a world for the past 102 years. Um, so, but at least what we have done is we have learned from the experiences of China, from Italy, from um, uh, Korea, and and also from within the United States. I can tell you that the state of Connecticut, as of right now, is doing reasonably well, uh, but we ha still have a long way to go. And uh, right now, the people need to uh, continue to follow the, the recommendations are that uh, make sure that we have social distancing that continues on because we are trying to uh, make, make sure that the people are not infecting each other. And then we are flattening the curve. And if we flatten the curve, we are in better position for healthcare systems to manage this. So as a state, we are doing reasonably well. Uh, as a country, I wish we had uh, better opportunities for personal protective equipment and testing ability in a timely fashion. Uh, we have been a little behind on many of those fronts. Uh, but as a state, we are trying to do the best that we can with the cards that we have right now. We were just talking before, you're, um, you have a private practice, but you are a critical care doctor out of Manchester Hospital. So you know, you know exactly what's going on there. And you were saying before the, the issue of protective equipment is real and it's here, right? Absolutely. So, so we are seen in 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 United States as well, but also all over the world, wherever coronavirus is, that the healthcare workers who are the frontline workers are the highest risk of getting infected and and having complications and even death. Many lung doctors have died. Many nurses have been impacted. Uh, respiratory therapists have been infected. So we need to make sure that there is a protection in place for each and everyone who is in the front line taking care of the patients. Do you feel like right now you have enough protective equipment to do your job at this point? So uh, I, we may have enough for the time being, but we don't have it for more than the time being. And I, what I mean is that uh, uh, the supply chain has been disrupted significantly um, across the world. And as a result, the country does not have enough pr personal protective equipment. The state does not have enough right now, and that remains a priority. We have to make sure 
that our nurses, our doctors, our EMS workers, our entire team members are protected because we are only as good as the team members' ability to be able to continue to manage the patients. And, and once we start to see the large number of patients come in, we would be of no use if we are all infected and, and unwell ourselves. So this is going to be a lifeline for us to get all of these personal protective equipment like yesterday. Now this is, a, this is a respiratory disease. This is something that your patients, I'm sure you're very worried about with them. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them have some pre-existing conditions. Have you had any issues with your patients uh, possibly contracting coronavirus at this point? Uh, what are you telling them? So we are we are suspicious in some cases. Uh, first of all, we are are reaching out to the patients in a manner that we are communicating with them on the phone or through Skype right now because uh, we want to make sure that we are not contributing to them getting an infection because at times people are asymptomatic and if you're asymptomatic, you can actually give that illness to somebody else. So just to protect our own patients, we are interacting with them through Skype at this point. We are also making phone calls to them and. If they have an illness, we are giving them uh, all the instructions, and at times we are doing the test when we are suspicious. But not everyone can just go and get tested, even if you're showing symptoms. They're saying you have to call a doctor and get a prescription and then make an appointment. Uh, do you think that that's a good enough response at this point? Because the um, state epidemiologist was saying the other day that there could be thousands of cases here in Connecticut that we don't even know about, and they just haven't gotten tested. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's very right about this as well because the community spread is happening in it right now. So I can tell you that uh, we are better than about two weeks ago. This week is better than the last week. So every week we are improving in our ability to uh, do the testing. So uh, I wish we had that capacity from the time we uh, were ready. But since we have not had that capacity, we are ramping up, and I know the next week is going to be better than this one. So we have the systems gradually coming together. It's truly taking um, the, the private industry and, and the universities and literally all hands on deck to try and solve this part of the puzzle. Uh, we are somewhat in the dark with respect to the interactions, and that is causing us to have much more concern, and we are uh, making sure that we are being e even more cautious in the patient. Ideally, we would have wanted a lot of our patients to have the tests to know exactly what's going on. And we don't have that capacity, so we are acting and, and working with the mindset that the, spree, the disease is widespread and, and the uh, community spread is happening as we speak. Now, the patients that you've had tested, has it been a streamlined process? Has it been easy for you as a doctor to get them tested when, when you requested it? Yes, uh, now it is. Uh, two weeks ago, absolutely not. Uh, so clearly this week is a better week uh, where uh, we can uh, test and, and we, we are able to test in our own office uh, and we actually have multiple places we can send the patients to now. So I think we have moved in the right direction. So the clinicians can order the test at this time. All it's going to take is uh, the patient to uh, uh, get a prescription for a physician uh, and, and order and they don't need to necessarily need to see a physician if they are at a high risk and your clinician and your doctor feels that you need a test they can give a prescription to you and you can have the test at many of the places. Many of the hospitals are now doing the test uh, at this time. What do you tell um, you know, a regular citizen in Connecticut who doesn't have a pre-existing condition? What do you tell them to do if they're starting to feel symptoms, if they have a fever, if uh, they have you know, a cough? What should they do? So I, I, first of all, I want them to know that they have to take this infection seriously. They're two parts to it that I want them to look at. One is to take a better understanding of their health, which is uh, that they stay hydrated, they stay well rested, they also uh, need to be well nourished, and that's going to be one part, and then be very conscious of their health and well-being at that time to keep an eye on their heart rate, their respiratory rate, if they are getting more short of breath, they need to contact uh, their doctors if their breathing starts to get worse. So that one part is about the health and their well-being. The second part is we need to make sure that they are not spreading the infection to others. 80% of the people will get better in their homes. That is the good news. But those 80% have to make sure that they are not increasing the number of people who are infected. So they have to try their best to, to remain in, in 
uh, a quarantine that they are not infecting anybody else, but they need to interact via phone and other means to communicate with uh, their family members, their friends, and their physician to make sure that they are doing well. If they get worse, we need to know about it because uh, in the second week of this infection, there is a higher risk of people getting worse. And then we need to pick those patients early enough, identify them, and then make sure they're in the right environment for the treatment. All right, Dr. Saud Anwar, really appreciate your time. Please stay safe out there, and we're grateful uh, for you and all of our other doctors and healthcare workers that are putting themselves on the line to keep us all safe. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you so healthy. much. Thank you, Jen. Well, up next, after a quick break, one pizza shop making a difference during challenging times, how Naples Pizza in Farmington is paying it forward. Stay with us.